Okay, so we've got a quadratic congruence question here. 7x squared plus 9x plus 4, congruent with 0, mod 25. Now, straight away looking at this, I've got one problem, and it's this 25 here. But there's another solution we can do than the usual finding the square or factoring this. Well, obviously, we can see that this doesn't factor very well. Um, we could use the rule where this is modulo 5 squared. So what we do know is that this is mod 5 squared. So now what we'll do is we'll break this up now and solve this for mod 5. So 7x squared plus 9x plus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 5. So now what we didn't need to do is find couple of values for x modulo 5 to start with. So we can break this down a little bit already. So modulo 5, we can translate that as 2x squared. So we can subtract 5 off that. And we can also subtract 5 off this. And the plus 4, we'll leave as it is. And that's mod 5. Okay, so now we'll take the square. So we've got 2x squared plus 2x plus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 5. And now we'll take this out inside here. So now put a big bracket and they go x plus 1 squared. Obviously, because of the plus 1, we've now got to put a minus 1, minus 1 squared, which we'll put that. And then plus 4 is congruent with 0 mod 5. Okay, let's get this minus one out of here. But remember there's a multiple here of two. So now we're up to x plus one squared plus four. And then two times minus one squared is minus two. And that's congruent with zero mod five. Okay, uh, sorry, we need to leave the two in front of the x plus one squared. We haven't sorted that out yet. So let's bring this plus 4 minus 2 onto the other side. So 2x plus 1 squared is now congruent with plus 4 minus 2 is plus 2. So if we switch in sides, we've got minus 2. Okay, we can just cancel out these 2s now and change that to a 1. So x plus 1 squared is congruent with minus 1 mod 5. Now minus 1 mod 5 we know is 4, and that's really handy because 4 is a perfect square. So now we've got x plus 1 is congruent with 4 mod 5. Okay, so usual business, we just take the square root on both sides. And now we get x plus 1 is congruent with plus or minus 2 mod 5. Two solutions, the square root of 4. So now all we need to do is subtract 1 on both sides. So now x will equal plus 2 minus 1 or minus 2 minus 1. So plus 2 minus 1, that's going to give us positive 1, mod 5. And minus 2 minus 1 is going to give us minus 3, which is then going to give us plus 2. mod 5. So after all that, the solutions for this one is going to be 1 and 2. So I'm just going to write that down here. So now x equals 1 or x equals 2. So I'm just going to little, put a little subscript under here because that's going to be important now for when we come to the next stages. So I'm just going to wipe this off the board and then we'll make some space to do the next lot of calculations. Okay, so if we just call this f of x, this function here, so f of x equals 7x squared plus 9x plus 4. So now we need f of x1, which I'm just going to write down here. So f of x1, plugging in 1 into all these, 1 squared is 1, that's 7, plus 9 is 16, plus 4 is 20. So that's going to be useful. Next we want f of x2. 
Now plugging in 2 into all these, 2 squared is 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 9s, that's 18, that's 46, and 4 is 50. Okay, so we've got that there and we've shown that 20 and 50 is congruent with 0 mod 5, so that's all good. Now the system here now we're going to use is where we're taking the derivative of this. So first of all, let's just take the derivative of x and we get 14x plus 9. Okay, so that's important. Now we calculate the derivative for each of our x's. So f prime of x1, that's 14 times 1 is 14 plus 9, it's 23. And then f prime of x2, so 2, 14 is 28, plus 9 is 37. Okay, now for this technique, it's very important that the derivative of x1 and the derivative of x2 is not a divisor of 5. So we can see that f prime x1 and x2 do not divide, so not divisors of 5. So that's important. Okay, so now's a little formula which we can use. So let's use x1. So in x1, so we go f of 1 divided by 5, and then we add f prime of 1 times a variable. Now I'm going to use this variable, we're going to call this n. I'm going to use k, but I'm going to use k again in a minute. Okay, f prime of 1, n. So this then leads us to f prime of 1, well, I could call this x1 actually, we should probably just call that x1, just so it's clear, but we're looking at 1 anyway. So that then gives us 20 over 5 plus 23n. Okay, and that will give us our variable, let's just let that equal a variable, and we're going to let that equal h. We'll call that subscript 1. Okay, so now in x2, using this formula, so f of x2 over 5 plus f prime of x2 times n. Okay, so that would give us, that would give us h2. So therefore our h2 equals f of x2 is 50 over 5 plus the derivative of x2, which is 37. Okay, so that's important. Now, one thing we can look at here with these solutions for x1 and x2, we can see that there is multiple solutions for that. So I'm just going to rewrite them to show that there's multiple solutions, and it's 1 plus 5k. So if you plugged in 6 into here, you'd still get, so into here, into the mod 5, you'd still get a correct solution. And same with here, we'll have 2 plus 5k. So if you plugged in 6 for this one and 7 for this one, you'd still get a correct congruence. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to work out with this here. So we've got this one here. Now that will translate as 4 plus 23n. And this one will translate here as 10 plus 37n. So that's our little important formula that we're going to need. Okay, so we've got 4 plus 23n. It's congruent with 0 mod 5. And here we will have 10 plus 37 n is congruent with 0 mod 5. So 4 plus 23 n to get something congruent with 5, well 2 23s are 46, so 4 plus 46 is 50, so n is 2.
And here, 10 is congruent with the 5 anyway, so n will, can equal 0 or 5 or 10. So here we'll have n equals 0. That's the easiest solution for this one. OK, so now we've got these values here. We've got our 2 and we've got our 0. Now we can plug that in to this value here. So x1 equals 1 plus 5 times. Now we're plugging that in. And that is going to be modular 25. So we're back now with the original modulus. So now we're going to go for x2 equals 2 plus 5k. So instead of the k, we're going to use the n, because this is in our final solution. So it's going to be 2 plus 0 times n mod 25. OK, now here we've got our n is 2. So therefore our x1 equals 1 plus 10 mod 25, which is 11. And here 2 plus 0 n is just 2. Mod 25. So therefore the solutions to this will be 2 or 11. Okay, that's our answers.